The second main type of sequence that we study in Algebra 2 is the geometric sequence. Now, for definitions, a geometric sequence is a set of numbers that has a constant factor between consecutive terms, meaning that in order to move from one term to the next, you're always multiplying by the same amount. Now, in an arithmetic sequence, this constant change was the same thing being added, or a common difference. Now, next vocabulary term is the common ratio. The factor being multiplied by to move from one term to the next in geometric sequence. So as we figure out what this multiplier is, that becomes our common ratio and it is denoted in the mathematics with the variable r. So as we go through and start looking at the general form for our geometric sequences, it's a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Now this looks an awful lot like the equation for an exponential function, and in many ways it is because we're always multiplying from one item to the next in order to move, but just like with the arithmetic sequences, we are only talking about the values that exist at the integer value points for n, not everything in between. So let's look at using some geometric sequences. First, we need to be able to identify, are these items geometric sequences? If so, identify the first term and the ratio. So if it's a geometric sequence, the way that we would identify it is that we take two consecutive items. In this case, we're going to take three and 9, and divide the second one by the first. And then we try it for the next one. So we're going to take 27 and divide it by 9. And then again with our next, 81 divided by 27. And if these are always equal, then we have a constant ratio. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 9 is 3. And 81 divided by 27 is 3. So yes, this is a geometric sequence. And a sub 1 is 3. r is also 3. Next. We're going to take a look at 1 to 4. So, 4 divided by 1. Next, 9 and 4. So, 9 fourths. And last one we have here, 16 divided by 9. Well, 4 divided by 1 is 4. 9 divided by 4 is 2 and a quarter. 16 divided by 9 is 1 and 7 sixteenths. So since we do not have a consistent amount being found here, no, this is not a geometric sequence. Last one on this page, we have 5 squared to 5 to the 9th. So since it's given in this way, we go 5 to the 9th divided by 5 squared. Next, we take our 5 to the 16th and 5 to the 9th. So that's 5 to the 16th divided by 5 to the 9th. And then our last two, the 23rd and 16th, 5 to the 23rd divided by 5 to the 16th. Now, keeping in mind our properties of exponents, when we divide items of a common base, we can simply subtract. So this is 5 to the 7th, 16 minus 9. 5 to the 7th, 23rd, 3 divided by minus 16 because that division is 5 to the 7th. So, yes, this is a geometric sequence. a sub 1 is 5 squared, and r is equal to 5 to the 7th. We don't have to have the specific numbers, we can use the exponential form as needed. So, as you're able to identify these geometric sequences and work your way through, 
Next, we need to be able to find missing items and write both the recursive and explicit form sequence. So, first, what is the 18th term of the sequence 5, 10, 20, 40? Well, looking at this, in order to move from 5 to 10, we multiply by 2. 10 to 20, we multiply by 2. 20 to 40, we also multiply by 2. So, we have a sub n equals 5 times 2 to the n minus 1 power. We're looking for the 18th term, so a sub 18 equals 5 times 2 to the 18 minus 1 power. Now 18 minus 1 is 17. 2 to the 17th times 5 is equal to 655,360. That would be the 18th term in the sequence. Next one, what is the missing what are the missing terms in the geometric sequence? A little bit of a writing problem there. 3 two missing items and then negative 192. Now the way we go about this problem is using our properties of exponents. We know we have a set of changes that occur here. We have some r we're multiplying by again and then again. So altogether we have three r's, so r cubed. And this is going to be equal to the change that occurred during this time. So we're going to negative 192 divided by 3. And that should tell us what our rate is, or our common ratio. So r cubed equals a negative. 192 divided by 3 is 64. Take the cubed root of each side. And we have r equals a negative 4. Now this sequence is different than ones we've seen in the past because we're alternating signs as we go through. But that is possible when we're dealing with the geometric because we can multiply by a negative r value. So 3 times negative 4 is a negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 4 is a positive 48. Positive 48 times a negative 4 is a negative 192. So we have found our missing value. Next up, we need to talk about a process that can speed this up of what we just did. And it works for two items instead of three. And this is called the mean. Now an arithmetic mean, you add items together and divide by how many are there. For a geometric mean, the geometric mean of two positive values, x and y, is equal to the square root of their product. So if I have two items, multiply them together and take the square root, that will give me the geometric mean, the middle value when multiplying. So as an example, if I have the values 2 fifths and 8 45ths, and there's one missing value between them in a geometric sequence. In order to find the square root of this, or find the missing value, the geometric mean, I'm going to abbreviate GM, of 2 fifths and 8 40 fifths is equal to the square root of their product, so 2 fifths times 8 40 fifths. Now simplifying, 2 times 8 is 16, 5 times 45 is 225, and if we take the square root of this, well square root of 16 is 4, square root of 225 is 15. 
So the item that goes into that missing location up there is either a positive or negative 4 fifteenths. And the reason is positive or negative because we were taking the square root, so it gives us two answers. Also, we don't know if our R value is supposed to be positive or negative, and so we do have the opportunity of switching signs every time here. So, geometric mean, similar to arithmetic mean. In this case, we are multiplying together and then taking the square root. So, arithmetic sequences, geometric sequences are the basis of what we're going to be dealing with here. To round out the chapter, we're going to take a few lessons to study what are called series. And those series are based on these sequences. So make sure you understand this lesson along with lesson 9-2 so we can be ready to move forward.